Okay, uh, we're going to get started. This is about the bull one. This is about this. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, last time was the first. Welcome to tonight's meeting at Middleton City Hall. I will call the meeting of the Middleton Common Council to order on today, May 16th. Let's start with roll call, please. Alder Schaefer. Here. Alder Wokas. Here. <coughs> Mayor Kuhn. Here. Alder Nelson. Here. Alder Jackson. Here. Alder Hanero. Here. Alder Lorman. Here. Alder Crow. Here. Okay, so next on the agenda is public comments. Uh, will someone be taking, uh, doing a timer for me? Fantastic. Uh, the first name is Kevin Spittler. Please come to the microphone and state your name and address. Uh, good evening, I'm Kevin Spittler. I live at 6848 Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, I'm here this evening to give our new council and previous members a heads up on the upcoming budget season. Um, Last night, I um, tuned into the Sustainability Committee, and there are many, many opportunities for the city to take advantage of federal funding to make great strides in climate change initiatives. And a lot of those opportunities involve the city making some of its own funding available. And as I've commented in the past, the city has never budgeted much in advance for climate initiatives. And this would be the 2024 budget season would be the year to do it because otherwise we're gonna, we may leave a lot of federal money on the table. And these are initiatives such as EV charging stations and also uh, the streetlight replacement program to move us from or to LED fixtures and light bulbs, which can save the city uh, a lot of money over time and also reduce our climate imp, uh, footprint. So I would just encourage the council to this year um, look for those items to come forward out of the sustainability committee and give them very serious consideration. They may also involve shifting money from 2023's existing budget to take advantage of some of those uh, large grant opportunities. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Up next is Stephanie Merritts. Please come to the microphone and state your name and address. My name is Stephanie Moritz. I live in District 7 at 3053 Old Creek Road, and I'm speaking to item number three under miscellaneous on your agenda, which is the sidewalk proposed for Pheasant Branch Road. My uh, dwelling is a stone's throw away from this proposed sidewalk, and I have been looking forward to it for a long time. I regularly walk to the Conservancy from my home to the path that connects to the Pheasant Branch Conservancy trails. And I do not presently feel safe walking along Pheasant Branch. There is no sidewalk, no path. Uh, the shoulder is very uneven uh, and the traffic consistently speeds past the 25 mile per hour limit. So I would very much like a safe a way to get to the conservancy. And I understand that um, my neighbor and condo association has asked that the sidewalk not be constructed. And I hope that's not the case and that we can come to a reasonable compromise if necessary so that we can see something put in there for pedestrians. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Up next is Judith Nystrom. Please come to the microphone. Thank you so much. My name is Judith Nystrom and I live at 3055 Old Creek Road. And I would like to speak very strongly in favor of the sidewalk on Pheasant Branch Road also. It really does not feel safe at all to walk on that stretch of Pheasant Branch Road to get to the path that takes us down into the Conservancy. And a lot of people do walk this way. So I think that it would be a real public service to provide that sidewalk. I know I, I live on the corner, 
So I see many pedestrians. They come both up Old Creek and down Frank Lloyd Wright. And they go from Pheasant Branch going south also up the hill. So a lot of people do walk on that block. So please, I ask you to seriously think of the safety of all of us who use that path. Thank you. Thank you so much. Up next is Dean Growth. Please come to the microphone. Yeah, my name is Dean Growth. I, um, at 6007 uh, Lake Street, talking about the uh, boat ramp. And my question on the boat ramp is you want to turn 66 feet into a park, but you're going to take away access to a lot of the individuals and people that use the boat ramp, such as fishermen and paddleboarders, kayaks in the summer and ice, fisher ice fishermen in the winter and ice sailing boats in the winter as well. I don't, I listened to the proposals last night and I just couldn't understand the access that you're trying to create is actually going to take access away. Now, where I live, if you want to take it away, that just means less people where I live. And I'm like, I should all be in favor of that. But I'm there and I see boats out at 5 a.m. in the morning till 9 or 10 at night. And I would hope that you would keep the access for the boat ramp for the people that fish, the people that want to get access to the lake. And then also, and there's some solutions to what your proposal was last night um, by just creating uh, space on one side for kayakers, the other side for a boat ramp for all sorts of boats to get in. And then also keeping access for the fire department so that they can get easily in and out, especially with emergency equ equipment to make it safe. That's one proposal that I saw where the fire department's boat was actually going to be in front of somebody else's property, which made no sense at all. So that's basically what I have to say, and I'm sure you're going to hear more. Thank you. Uh, John Mason. Hi, I live at uh, 3322 Conservancy Lane, John Mason. I'm here on behalf of the Middleton Conservancy Condominium, Condominium Association, where I serve on the board. I, have a, I had a career as a hydrogeologist working in the private and public sector. I request the city of Middleton to not install the sidewalk adjacent to the condominium property along Pheasant Branch Road. The construction of this sidewalk that we would have to pay for was a surprise to us. We were not notified or asked to come to the council meeting when this was approved. We were aware of plans of a possible paved path, but we would unlikely have to pay for. So receiving this letter was a surprise. We have several reasons why we think the sidewalk should not be constructed. The sidewalk is to be five feet wide and 350 feet long. That's about 1,500 square feet of impervious surface that will replace soil and vegetation. It's possible that the stormwater will flow from the city right away down to our property below, where there are landscaped areas and homes. We are required to manage stormwater at our property and the installation of this sidewalk is of concern. The sidewalk is not necessary since there are alternatives for people from our association to reach the restaurants and shops to the south by crossing the road at the crosswalk, choosing one or two short trails and then going through the Middleton Hills neighborhood. Similarly, our neighbors to the south can do the reverse as a means to get to the Pheasant Branch Conservancy, or they can enter the Conservancy along Century Avenue at the Branch Street intersection. Regarding the costs, we should not be assessed the $18,000 to construct, construct the sidewalk or pay for maintenance for a sidewalk that is unnecessary. Requiring us to shovel snow off the sidewalk does not, does not make any sense since the sidewalk will extend up to the path and the steps that are not shoveled by the city in the winter. Okay. Finally, 
this sidewalk may create liability issues that could affect our insurance premiums. On behalf of our condo association, I request the Common Council not proceed with the construction of the sidewalk and direct the Public Works Department to provide a change order to the sidewalk construction contractor so that this sidewalk is not constructed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Zadeblik, please come to the microphone. And state your name and address, please. Thank you. Hi, my name is John Zadeblik. I'm a recent homeowner on 6023 Lake Street, and I'm here to speak about the proposed to the redesign of the Lake Street boat launch and the street leading to the boat, boat launch. Um, I've already emailed the council some concerns about safety, specifically having a boat launch immediately adjacent to a public swimming beach and the hazards that that provides. Um, as well as any maintenance that would be required for dredging and making such a swimming facility viable. Um, currently, it is not appealing to swim in because of sediment and silt. Um, one issue that I did not raise about the boat launch and proposed street design is right now there is a restriction for the immediate adjacent property on Lake Street that it is not um, serviced with water year round due to the location of the water main to that property. At this point, if the city is going to do any reconstruction work on that street, um, I would propose that this is an opportunity to lower that plumbing main so that it can be serviced year round so that if future repairs were needed or interest in that property, they would not need to redevelop or um, repair that street. So thank you. Thank you. Up next is David Shaw. Hello, David Shaw, 1337 North High Point Road. I am on the uh, Park Commission and we were here last night. Um, and there got to be a lot of discussion about a lot of things that were sort of outside of the scope of what I, at least personally, I can't speak for others, were thinking about when we got this assignment back in April of last year. Um, we were at a task with looking at Lakeview Park East along with the, the uh, boat launch. And the boat launch was a little bit of a wild card for us because it's not a park. Um, but we carried forward and, and Park Architecture helped us out. They took uh, public input and we heard more uh, last month. And we came up with what we thought was a good hybrid, um, which I'm sure you've seen. Um, but there's a few things that stuck in my mind last night and I've been thinking about a lot since. And, and I think maybe if you guys have an issue with, with what we put forward, um, I might suggest that this is a, a, a bigger issue than the boat launch. Um, we talked a lot last night about other parks nearby and other boat launches and what to do in various cases. And so, um, I would suggest if you didn't like what we were doing, that maybe this go back to like plan commission and be have this viewed as, as a uh, land use issue rather than a park issue. Um, but uh, again, we did what we could. I think we came up with a good solution, um, but there are lots of points of view on this. I've heard lots of them recently. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, up next is maybe Don Anderson. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Don Anderson and actually I'm one of the units at uh, 6031 Lake Street. Um, I've been in the uh, lake community business for uh, over 40 years, uh, launching boats and uh, using activities on the lake. Uh, two things that I think people aren't aware of of that boat launch is it's very heavily used in the winter. Everybody thinks of boat launches as being used in the summer. Uh, just an idea of how heavily used they are Lake Kaganza this year hosted the ice sailing world championships with 130 boats from 15 countries. Uh, that's happened on Lake Monona. Uh, it's, it's a big event. It's one of the few launches that you can actually get onto Lake Mendota and the skiers and Middleton Bay freezes first. It's calm. The ice is smooth. So it's a very special use landing. Marshall Park doesn't work. Uh, you know, uh, down by the union, there's some areas that you can get on, but there's issues. So 
heavily used in the winter. I'd hate to see that taken away or not plowed um, to be usable. It's also a very nice area for people to go down. They drive their car down. They look at the lake. What's the lake doing? What's the ice like? Turn around, leave again. Uh, this proposal would leave it very congested. Um, there's some design flaws in the piers. Um, when you back a boat in, you want the pier on your driver's side so you can see in your mirror if the boat's parallel to the pier. This has the piers on the opposite side. Uh, it also has a L on the pier, which is uh, pretty useless for where the sheriff's boat would be. The sheriff's boat could be moved on the other side. Uh, if the pier was moved over so that the ramp was on the correct side for backing a boat in and out, it would also leave a staging area for a boat coming off the lake so they could actually tie up instead of tying up the ramp part and disrupting all the traffic that's trying to get in. So uh, I feel there's flaws in the design of this. I've designed many, many piers for municipalities and residences. This is not, it's a traffic congestion. Last, my point is, and I've launched, you know, I launched four boats today, launch them every day. The worst nightmare is backing boats into landing where there's kids and people. They are all excited. They're at the lake. They're not looking. You're going to run them over with the trailer. You can't see behind the trailer. You do not want people that are not familiar that boats are going to be backing up and the driver cannot see. So uh, design plan, but the, the launch is a gem the way it is. And I believe it should remain very similar to the, to the way it is. Thank, Thank you. you. Up next is... Alan Muirgad, Muirgad, you're going to correct me on, I'm sure. Uh, please come to the microphone and say your name and address, please. My name is Alan Muirhead. Oh, I'm sorry apologies. about my printing. <laughs> I live at 3029 Old Creek Road. And my comments are about the Pheasant Branch sidewalk. Um, uh, my wife and I are co-presidents of the Solitude Unit Owners Association. And uh, on Saturday, the 13th, a resident of Solitude did ask us, ask the board to send a letter to the council supporting the sidewalk. I did send a letter then on Sunday, the 14th, having talked it over with the other people on the board, that letter attempted to balance the public benefit of the sidewalk with the concerns of the MCCA that John just mentioned. Tonight, I am here speaking, however, as a private citizen, not as the president, not representing the board. I agree that improving pedestrian access is a good thing to do. It is a public benefit. Whether that is achieved by installing a, quote, normal sidewalk, making that sidewalk of a water permeable material, pitching it so it doesn't drain down into the uh, conservancy, uh, simply paving the existing trail on the other side of the road or widening the road itself, it's up to the planners to decide. But what concerns me most is that the residents of the conservancy condo are being asked to pay for the cost of installation, most of them at least, even though they will not benefit from the result. It seems to me that the public as a whole should pay for this. In other words, the city should reconsider the mechanisms by which sidewalks and things like that are funded. I'll use it to walk to the... My wife, Kathy, who is, could not come tonight, also asked me to convey these comments. She says, I believe that the Pheasant Branch Conservancy is one of Middleton's best public areas. I therefore support the need for improved pedestrian access as a Middleton taxpayer, I believe the fair way to pay for public benefits is out of public funds, i.e. out of general tax dollars, including our own. Therefore, she says, I do not support the city's position that the cost of this infrastructure improvement should be borne mostly or solely by the adjacent property owners. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Sally Carpenter. I'm Sally Carpenter, 3043 Old Creek Road, and uh, I use the uh, conservancy four days a week at the minimum and would appreciate having a sidewalk. I'm 80 years old and I do walk quite well, but I also don't really want to walk right next to traffic. So I'm in favor of the sidewalk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Deanna Gold, please come to the microphone and say your name and address. Hi, I'm Diana Gold and I'm here uh, from 6037 Lake Street. And just to keep it short but sweet, I would like to basically reiterate and state that I agree with what Mr. Donnie Anderson just said, mostly about the safety of a boat launch with kids in the area. It's not a good area for the beach, the ground there, and it's too small. So I 100% agree with that. I also agree with what Mr. Groth from Wake Street said and Mr. Zadeblik. What was your last statement? I'm oh, sorry. my name? Uh, no, oh. you, what was your last statement? I oh, that. I agree with what Mr. Groth from Lake Street said. Groth. Thank you so much. And Mr. Zadeblik and Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Lee Janice. Hi, my name is Leo Janice, and uh, I'm 5975 uh, Lake Street. Thank you. Um, I'm also uh, in support of what Mr. Anderson was saying. I would like to add a couple of different uh, angles. One is, um, I think it would be a disservice to the people of Middleton, uh, the lake access, uh, people who have enjoyed lake access there in the past for decades. Um, I think it would be a disservice to change uh, to the proposal uh, that, that was forwarded by the Lakes uh, Parks and uh, Commission. Um, I also think that um, if, in fact, another design flaw that I would add to Mr. Anderson's <laughs> pointing out of uh, several things is the, the ice comes up in the winter. And if you're considering having, you know, trees and a walkway and uh, pea gravel or beach, the, the ice does some serious damage to these shorelines. And I think you would spend a lot of additional dollars um, likely redoing that at possibly every year. Um, and it also could be a, uh, um, a liability. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. All right. Next is Thomas Polino. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Tom Polino. I'm uh, 6041 Lake Street. I'm the president of the uh, Middleton Boathouse Company. Um, I want to talk about the the proposal plan for the uh, the boat launch. Now, in in back in uh, 2006 and 2008, the city of Middleton requested and received funding from the DNR to uh, complete and improve the Lake Street ramp. ramp. That was a grant of $60,000 with the intention that there would be two launch sites there. The city took the money and built a very, very nice boat launch there. And that is still there right now. The boat launch is used by a lot of people. It's used by recreational boaters. It's used by sports people. It's used by the people who um, use kayaks and paddles, paddle sports. But there are other people who use it as well that are very important to the city. Well, one of them is Dane County, who actually used that location to drop off weeds. Whenever the weed cutters come, that is the location that they will bring the weeds in to be harvested and taken off of the lake. But the other people who use that, and they're very important to the community, are business people. The people who service the homes on the lake make their living by getting onto the lake and servicing boats, piers, shorelines, et cetera. And they use that spot very, very frequently. And it's an, it's an easy spot for them to get their equipment in and out of, much easier than any of the other places on the lake. So it, it, it really serves a purpose. So a couple of things, the DNR said, we're going to give you the money. The grant is good till 2028, at which point in time it, it comes up, but you're going to have to get the DNR to change their ideas because they technically said that's a two boat, a two ramp boat launch until that period of time. But also it's a great boat launch. It will never really be a great park, no matter what you try and do with it. You can throw a lot of money at it, but it's never really going to be that good. But if you throw a little bit of money at it, if you make the piers better, if you make a better spot for a uh, small craft like paddle craft to launch from that spot, that will be a really, really great place. And it'll be an asset to the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Robert, Robert Victory, Victory. Hello, 
uh, Robert Vickery, Thank you. 5967 Lake Street. Uh, I have the property that's uh, immediately adjacent to the boat launch, literally the closest property uh, to the boat launch, which was one of the attractions of the property in the first place. Um, so I'm in support of keeping the boat launch for a lot of the reasons that Mr. Polino just stated. Uh, but more importantly, what I want to talk about is the idea of a beach and swimming area. Um, at first, uh, the idea of having a beach and swimming area sounded like a great idea. But when I thought about it, I can share a personal experience of swimming, unfortunately, in that area. Um, a lot of silt and muck comes off of Fre Pheasant Branch Creek. And the muck and silt in that area is literally about this deep. So if you walk on the, in there without any shoes on, you're probably up to your knees. Or if you're a child, probably up to your waist in silt and muck. So not only is it unpleasant, but it's just medically unsafe. Um, I was in that water, unfortunately, uh, got bit by some kind of aquatic critter, ended up with a, an infection in my leg uh, that spread into a cellulitis where I was on weeks worth of antibiotics um, and uh, ended up with a permanent scar in my leg to show for it. So uh, it didn't bother me too much, but I'd hate to see kids swimming in this sort of water. I think there's a lot better and safer areas on Lake Mendota for kids to swim um, than in that Northwest corner of the lake in Middleton. So for that reason, um, I would not recommend uh, a beach or a swimming area. Thank you. Thank you. Diana Gillis, Gills? Gulls? Okay, great. And then we had Leo Janis. See you. All right. Oh, are we rocking it? Ginny Corwin? Ginny, okay. I'm Ginny Corwin and I live on Middleton Beach Road and I'm representing the Middleton Beach neighbors tonight on this Lake Street project. There are 10 boat launches on Lake Mendota. How many launches are there that accommodate paddlers? The exhibit that you have tonight, number five, uses the term small craft launch, but this proposal supports launching boats with equipment and craft which can be launched manually. It's our understanding that that proposal is not a beach. So somebody might have to clarify that. Here's a possible scenario of how we see this design could possibly work. It's a hot summer day and the launch park is busy. Adults and kids are fishing off the pier. Two paddlers come, carry their kayak and paddleboard onto the pier to launch them. Today there's a breeze and the water is rough. They drop their gear into the water and carefully step onto it or in it. As they do that, a power boat which just launched on the ramp across from them, starts its engine to back out into the lake. This creates waves for the paddlers that they did not expect. This is an accident waiting to happen. This design tries to accommodate too many needs in too small of a space while not servicing any of them very well. Our recommendation is to create a park for only manually launched equipment. This provides lake access to those who currently do not have access while being more compatible with the neighborhood. Having worked on the Middleton Beach Road reconstruction project lately, we've learned the value of collaborating across committees and this project offers some of the same opportunities. We ask that you not make a decision on exhibit F tonight. Rather, we ask that you solicit input and recommendations on two designs from four committees before making any decision. The first design option is the one before you. The second is exhibit D, which supports only manually launched equipment. The committees that we're recommending are first sustainability, which supports making environmental changes to address climate change. This is Middleton's best chance to support Dane County's efforts to reduce phosphorus going into the lake. Sustainability also includes those who are marginalized and do not have access to the lake. 
The second is plan commission, which is responsible for open space planning and determining what is best for the community and neighbors as a whole. The third, public safety, which should evaluate the use of the street and park with the variety of people and equipment using it. And then there's public works, which is responsible for maintaining street function, including parking and stormwater management. These committees have criteria that should be met in this project. They should weigh in on this before the Common Council makes a decision. Thank you. Next is Barb Regan. My name is Barb Regan. I live at 7419 University Avenue in Middleton. I'm an avid paddler and I launch from the Lake Street boat ramp probably about five days a week. Um, I propose that the launch remains just like it is. I think responsible paddlers and aware boaters are very aware of other craft around them. I personally choose to launch my kayak behind the fireboat, so I'm not in the way of powerboats launching and coming back into that area. Um, I also think that area is way too small to accommodate a swimming area. I think uh, swimmers have Marshall Park and they have Mendota Park if they choose to swim. And like Mr. Vickery said earlier, um, I don't know if you've seen it in the last couple of days this week, but when I launch, I have to go all the way to the end of the dock because the first 15 feet are absolutely disgusting with 18 inches of silt and sediment that would probably have to be dredged regularly from that location. So I'm adamantly opposed to having um, swimming area in there. Thank you. Uh, Tom Carmen. Thank you, good evening. Hello, my name is Tom Carmen. I'm at 2623 Middleton Beach Road. Um, I'd like to say, first off, I, I really respect everybody's opinion and what they were saying here today. But I also have to point out that there's very few of us that actually live on Lake Street year round. And I'm one of those. Um, I have to, and I was lived on there since before the, the current ramps and piers were put in. I have to say up front that this issue, I don't think is ready for Common Council to decide on. Um, I cannot relay at this point what needs to be discussed in three minutes for projecting setting conditions for the next 20 to 40 years and how that will impact us. Um, my recommendation, I strongly urge the city to configure the landing to a park green space area with only hand launching of craft. I, I agree with Jenny that there's too many uses trying to be accommodated here to do it very well. Um, I'd also like to point out, I don't think that that proposal precluded um, access during the winter, and that can probably be accommodated in, in a design. Um, this option is most closely depicted by Exhibit D, which was considered by the Parks Committee, but with some modifications. I attached that to my comments. Um, I'd like to put a picture in your mind a little bit. When, when the landing was closed for dredging in 2006, we immediately had egrets and cranes on the shoreline and staying in our yards. We even had loons that stayed in the bay for part of the year. That all went away when the powerboat traffic returned. We need to recognize that this landing concentrates powerboat traffic on the water, which disturbs wildlife, fish spawning beds, and leaves pollutants in the water. The shoreline here is unique in that it has springs that extend into the bay supporting wildlife. I did talk to a, a Middleton fisherman recently that was using the landing, and he said that he would rather use canoe there and use his power boat at Marshall Park for that reason. He would like to see it that way. So I think there's differing opinions on how, how to best serve different types of users. With a quiet launch, so we, with a quiet launch area in Bay, this landing can become a destination for birders, canoers, kayakers, paddleboarders, and non-motorized fishing, especially with its unique access to Pheasant Branch Creek. Critically, many, many of these stakeholders have been missing from the discussion so far. I recently learned from a Rutabaga staff member that there is no ADA kayak or canoe access anywhere on the Madison Lakes. In fact, several years ago, I know a group wanted to place a specialized ADA launching pad at the landing. However, it was determined that it would not be safe, fit safely with power boats in, in this space. 
the staff member also pointed out to me that this bay would be perfect as it's protected from west winds. We have an opportunity here to serve a part of our community that is not being served anywhere on the Mass and Lakes. Here's a point I cannot say strongly enough. Trailered boat traffic does not work for immediate neighbors on Lake Street, residents of Lake Street. For years, we have tried to work with the city on issues of noise, disturbance, negative activity, trespass, late night issues, trash, lights into houses, loud vehicles, and high speed, all related to trailer boat use. Madam Mayor, that's time. Okay. Thank you. Up next is Timothy Crummy. I'm Tim Crummy. I live in 3446 Glacier Ridge Road and I'm a year round Mid uh, Middleton resident. Um, also, co own a boathouse for the last two years and lived on Middleton Beach Road for the 17 years prior to that, including prior to the dredging. So I've seen what the the bottom of the lake's like. A couple of comments, some of which are repetitive, so I'll be quickly. Um, I agree that the bottom of the lake and the dredging that goes, that had to go on and as it's slowly filling back in from Pheasant Branch makes the use of that corner of the lake um, quite undesirable for someone in the water. Um, both the dirtiness of the water from the silt and also the bottom that we've talked about. I agree that the space is too small for all uses. And I'd like to point out that if the land isn't great for lake use right there, we have, um, we're taking a chance that we'll put money into something, um, restrict something that works well now and put something in that doesn't necessarily work very well. Um, and as much as I'd like to prove it and have non um, motor boat launching also, I think to take away access for motor boats isn't desirable. Lastly, I was around when the Middleton Beach Road um, Neighborhood Association was formed. I would like to think if I still live there that I would be sensitive to other uh, Middleton residents who do have motor boats and not everybody is as fortunate to have their own boat in their backyard. It's the only access we have in the city. Many more Middleton residents use it than just Middleton Beach Road. And to take a position that we want to shut down other people from launching boats in Middleton, stated by people who have riparian access, isn't what I would have liked when I helped found the Middleton uh, Beach Road Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Do we have anyone online that wanted to speak? We do not. Can you help me by yes, calling them? Absolutely. We have three um, that have their hand raised. Uh, first, we'll call Madeline Ogus. Uh, please turn on your camera and uh, uh, state your name and your address. Good evening. My name is Madeline Ogus. I am a um, resident of 19, uh, 2937 Marina Drive. Um, my partner, I'm also representing Bill Schmock, lives at 6053 Lake Street, next door to Tom Carmen. Um, I'm Talking, um, I'm talking today about the Lake Street launch, Project 22117, um, sharing my perspective as a nearby resident, an avid kayaker that utilizes the Lake Street lamp, um, ramp, as well as a frequent visitor of the resident um, Bill Schmock and Lake Street. Um, we wanted to second um, to Tom Carmen's concerns about the noise, disturbance, and negative activity that happens on Lake Street being adjacent to the launch itself. Both Bill and I have personally had to deal with these issues as well as lawn litter, um, adhere, um, um, drinking and loud conversations on the, um, by the boat users in the front yard, um, being blocked into our driveway by trailers in line for launching, um, having trailers block our mailbox and keep us the mail carrier away from our mailbox. Um, we've reported this to the city police, but there hasn't been much action about that. Trailers are also blocking a substantial amount of the parking for visitors and are causing near, near collisions of trail um, of our cars due to trailers whipping around corners and blocking visibility of the road. Some boaters are so loud that we can hear entire conversations clearly through our windows um, when they're closed or open in Bill's house. And um, we keep his blinds perpetually shut for security and privacy. Bill said in his email to the council that the only thing he had extra to say was that he, he personally has witnessed people urinating on his lawn after boating and he, it frustrates him that this happens on a regular basis. And that's just the boats on the street. Now, in terms of the boats in the water, 
I'm a local kayaker, um, and I'm I'm finding that sharing the ramp with trailered boaters and motor boaters is extra dangerous, hazardous, and irritating because the boat engines um, stir up grime from the lake shore, making it harder to see what I'm stepping on as I'm launching my kayak. They are also leaking gasoline and oil into the water, which is very hazardous and dangerous. They cause excess waves and um, near collisions that cause me to bump into the dock and tip sometimes. And they also ob obviously do not always clean off the invasive plants that are on their boats when they are launching. And that seems to exacerbate the algae that's already a huge problem. Um, it is also a concern that their propellers are um, further disseminating the algae with their propellers and water intake. And that may also be contributing to the grime of that corner location. Um, and it also may be compromised in the Pheasant Branch Conservancy Creek itself. So I am asking the Common Council to consider configuring the land for just handcrafted launch craft um, for a park only. Thank you very much. Oh, and I guess to be clear, um, we're removing the ramp from exhibit F. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Casey Slaughter Becker. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm Casey Becker. I live at 2307 Maywood Avenue, and uh, I'm a resident of District 4. Uh, my kiddos attend schools here in Middleton at Sock Trail Elementary, and we love this community in the Aldermanic District that we live in. Um, tonight, I am testifying to express my support for Jennifer Cole to be appointed as the next Alder of District 4. Um, ever since Jennifer Cole made Middleton her home, I've been impressed with her commitment to our city, particularly with her desire to include and reflect varied voices and perspectives in decision making, um, as evidenced by her work on the Civic Campus Project. Our district, number four, is vibrant in a diverse part of Middleton in a lot of ways. Um, and Jennifer celebrates and embraces diversity in the work that she's done and the various professional roles she's held and in service to boards and commissions that support good government and centering people in policymaking. Um, I also want to share that in my experience, I found Jennifer to be a pragmatic person with a deep policy development background and administrative expertise. She takes public service seriously, and she does this work for all of the right reasons. Um, I think we'd be incredibly lucky to have a person with her passion, knowledge, expertise, and heart representing District 4 on the Middleton Common Council, and I have no doubt she would help make our entire Middleton community stronger with her service. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have Teresa Carrera. Hello. Um, so I am Teresa, um, and I am speaking in regards to the ordinance for the Middleton Shores Redevelopment Project. Um, back in March, when discussing with the Plan Commission whether a variance should be granted um, to a seven-story apartment despite the four-story height restriction, a member of the Plan Commission asked aloud, like, what's the purpose of the current zoning restriction and what was it intended for when it was passed? And I think it's reasonable to assume that the height restriction was set to protect the quality of life for all pre-established neighborhoods. Uh, and even um, if that wasn't the exact intention to at least protect the public's interest in general. Uh, approving this variant sets a dangerous precedent if such a restriction can be outweighed by a developer who will always be economically motivated to maximize height and density, then the purpose of the restriction will always be defeated. Um, it essentially nullifies the restriction and maybe any other statutory limitations on developers' desires. Seven stories will eventually become nine, then 10. Um, and then, you know, people will have no real statutory protection, which is supposed to exist independent of who's elected to office to enforce those very restrictions as noted in the Middleton Ordinances Section 1.07 Code of Ethics. Um, as such, myself and other residents of Maria Drive are asking this to approve the plan commission's recommendations, adding density of over 255 people, which also includes Captain Bills plus Middleton Shores, to the same city block without sufficient or safe infrastructure in place to support it is not in the best interest of the public. It is clear, however, that the rezoning and redevelopment of this property is seen as favorable um, by the plan commission, even though the contingencies therein do not solve or address most of the co concerns of quality of life. Um, so perhaps it is inevitable. 
But if it is approved, and at the least, we are asking for reasonable protections to be put in place along Century Avenue prior to the start of the redevelopment project, ideally within the next calendar year, regardless. Um, I've already sent an email uh, addressing most of the con these concerns, and I'm happy to send a follow-up email listing possible solutions. The biggest one is implementing speed reducing measures between Baskerville Park and Branch Street. Every time the light turns green at Baskerville Park, motorists speed well over 35, sometimes up to 50 miles an hour to race to the lights on Century, um, hoping that they hit green. Um, it's intensified noise. Uh, it, it's just entirely different. Adding another 180 plus people, um, plus a, you know, looking out of my office window and seeing seven stories of apartment instead of the trees is it's a it's a life changing deal. Thank you. And can you give us your address, please? Oh yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, Twenty nine twenty three Marina Drive. Thank you so much. Are there any others? Yes. Uh, lastly, we have Iris Jacobson. Hello and thank you, Iris Jacobson here, twenty nine nineteen Marina Drive. Um, I also want to um, ask the council to um, consider not recommending or postponing the recommendation to approve the um, the uh, rebuilding of the seven stories um, of the Middleton Shores apartments. I too agree with uh, the previous um, person who spoke um, <clears throat> about the quality of life. We watched our quality of life change when the um, a uh, bike bridge was put in, which we were in favor of the bike bridge, but what happened was there was no replacement of the trees or the greenery or the privacy to our neighbor, to our backyards when that went on. And we feel the same thing may be happening when a seven story building goes up right to the, close to the road on a short cul-de-sac. Um, Teresa mentioned, you know, uh, 250 some additional residents in this neighborhood in a small square block area, if you include Captain Bills in both phases of the um, Middleton Shores project. I, I do really think some consideration, there's, there's uh, some of the contingencies add even more of um, attraction to come to this neighborhood, not just to live, but to hang out. And I think that um, what the woman said earlier, um, that the plan commission's job is to do what is best for the neighbors, for the neighborhood, those folks living in the neighborhood as a whole. And we feel like they're not listening to us. And now we've come to the council to ask you to give us a, a, a space to be heard. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, we're closing public comments, and next on the agenda is the presentation update on Energy Efficiency Navigator Program. Hello, I'm Kelly Hilliard. I'm the Sustainability Coordinator for the City of Middleton. I'm going to speak for the first four slides. B. Corso from Elevate Energy, who's a project partner on this project come up and speak a little bit more about the other slides. So this program was initiated as a response to three concurrent crises um, in 2020, the COVID crisis, the ongoing Dane County housing affordability and um, availability crisis and the climate crisis. Um, the city developed a relationship with Elevate Energy and another local nonprofit Sustained Dane over the last few years um, regarding their work in Madison, working to reduce energy burden in naturally occurring affordable housing in that city. And um, the council approved $300,000 of ARPA funds be used to retrofit six to 10 naturally occurring affordable housing build buildings in Middleton. This program addresses approved actions in the Comprehensive Plan, the Sustainable Middleton Plan, and the 2018-32 Resolution for 100% Energy um, Resolution that specifies that Middleton prioritize energy efficiency in low to moderate income communities. The Strategic Plan also calls for a focus on sustainability combined with equity. To help tailor this program, we uh, engage community partners, Way Forward Resources that was formerly known as MOM, and the Senior Center, Healthy Babies, Bright Futures, which we received an additional public health grant from, 
Center on Wisconsin Strategy, IPM Institute, and we've recently brought on Dane County Public Health and the UW-Madison Public Health APEX program and invited them to a public health summit specific to this project. So what is it? Um, this program aims to help make housing affordable and make Middleton an affordable place to live. It focuses on small to medium sized unsubsidized multifamily rental housing. A lot of times that housing stock is left out of other programs which are available for energy efficiency such as PACE financing. Um, another uh, aim is to lower the tenant energy bills and increase comfort with air cooling perhaps and climate resiliency. I just wanna take a second to define energy burden, which is defined as the percentage of gross household income spent on energy costs. And we know that housing of this type of stock, the naturally occurring affordable housing, uh, averages about 30% more energy use because it's older, lower quality, maybe hasn't been retrofitted or updated for years. Um, and sometimes it also is neglected or have found to have health and safety concerns. The navigator in this sense is a really good tool because it guides the owner through the entire process. Sometimes building owners of these smaller building units have a harder time overcoming obstacles like first costs or identifying what the necessary upgrades actually are. And also it's difficult to find contractors who can come in and do all of this work at once where you're <coughs> combining solar with heat pumps, perhaps with other energy efficiency um, strategies. Oh, okay. Um, so to date completed, we have an outreach plan created and executed by the project team. We have applications for seven properties, which we've received. And four of those properties have now had energy assessments and also reports delivered to the property owners and Elevate and Sustained Dane are in the process of getting contractor quotes right now for that construction work. The next step is ongoing recruitment. We still have funding for a few additional buildings and also to continue collecting contractor proposals and cost estimates and then schedule the contractor work. And all of this um, is scheduled and slated to be done by the end of this year. This is just a little, the next I guess, this is just a little bit of information about some of the properties that have already had energy assessments. And um, you can see that the bottom two build properties on Spring Grove Court and Northbrook Drive, if they are able to put solar on their building could have both a really high estimated energy savings and also a higher cost savings. When you're able to add solar to the energy efficiency improvements, it really um, gives you a lot with energy savings and cost savings. The utilities must be paid by tenants for all properties and every building owner who takes part in this program must sign a five-year commitment to not raise the rent so that if they do see building improvements, their tenants do not see a raise in their rent. And this will also you know, affect tenants who move into that building ongoing for decades or years. So it isn't just the current tenants, it's tenants afterwards. And it provides a lasting savings, comfort, and energy improvement to that building. I'll now let Abby come up and talk a bit about some of the, the budgeting. Um, hi, good evening. Um, Abby Corso. I am with Elevate Energy. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer, and um, we're really um, honored to be working with the City of Middleton on this project. Um, Ele Elevate is a not-for-profit organization, and we are focused on climate equity and reducing kind of energy use, um, primarily in affordable housing. Um, I'm just going to speak to the budget here just as a way of an update to um, follow up uh, uh, Kelly's slides on where we are with the buildings. Um, we have a two-year budget of um, ARPA spending at $300,000. Primarily, that budget is used for actual construction and upgrade in the buildings. So of that 300, 231,000 is actually going into the buildings that are coming through the program. The rest is for project management. 
The project management is energy assessments, uh, working with contractors, working with owners, working with residents, all the pieces that are needed to actually um, kind of get the building upgraded uh, to the, um, the level of efficiency that, um, that, that we've identified. Next slide, please. Um, to supplement the, the ARPA funding, um, Elevate is con contributing $210,000 to the project, um, again, to supplement construction as well as um, project management costs. And that comes from philanthropy. Next slide, please. Uh, where we are to date, um, as Kelly mentioned, we are, you know, have assessment work done on four properties and um, of our total construction budget of 391,000, that includes the ARPA funding plus philanthropy, um, we have about 34% of that dedicated. Um, we have more properties coming through, three more assessments to do, and hopefully some more um, properties um, will sign up. Um, and use up the remaining construction budget. Our goal is to use all of this money and upgrade as many units as possible. Um, uh, that's all I have. So thank you um, for the opportunity to present. Yes, thank you for coming. Is there any questions or comments? Well, I have two sorry. questions. Our goal was 10 properties, is that right? We have a set yes. goal. Yeah, it was six to ten. Six to ten, and that's not okay. And then remind me, do they have to be four to eight units, or are we doing duplexes too? They could be two to eight. Two to eight. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, there nothing. Kelly, can I ask you? Um, there were the two properties that you were um, talking about the savings with solar and without. How much more cost? To the project, will that will that um, mean that you can't take as many properties if you do solar on the on the two? I believe the solar's factored into the construction estimates already um, in in the budget that you've looked at. But it's true if if we get four more applicants and they all are great for solar, then that means that's you know that that's a larger chunk of money when you add solar to a building. But you also then save the tenant more money and save more energy. Absolutely. It's so exciting. Great job. Thank you so much for coming. Next on the agenda is the proclamation honoring Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Alder Hanairo, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm honored to be able to read this proclamation to you, and I would appreciate all your indulgence for just a little personal context. If you've ever wondered about my last name, where it comes from, how it's pronounced, Hanairo is a Filipino name. I'm a Hanairo by marriage, but my husband, Ed, and my son, Michael, they're Hanairos by birth. My late father-in-law, Colonel Maximiano Romualdez Hanairo Jr., was born in Manila. And after coming to the United States, he graduated from West Point, and he began his military career overseeing engineering projects in Korea, working in nuclear defense at the Pentagon and in Nevada, and commanding an engineering battalion in Vietnam. While stationed in Germany in the early 1960s, Max met Maureen Comer, an Iowa farm girl whose forebears had come over from Ireland during the potato famine. Max and Maureen were married in Iowa in 1963. And I want to note that at that time in the United States, their marriage would have been illegal in 17 states, mostly in the South. A few years later, in 1967, the Supreme Court's landmark decision in Loving versus Virginia declared these anti-miscegenation laws to be unconstitutional. So proclamations like the one I'm about to read are very important. They remind us that we all belong here, we all contribute, and we're all in this together. And I read this proudly in honor of my Filipino family and all our Middleton neighbors, almost 6% of our population who are of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander descent. So proclamation of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Whereas celebration of Asian American and Pacific Island heritage in the United States formally began in 1978 and was made into a month long event in 1992. And whereas Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month 
seeks to honor and recognize the contributions to our country by generations of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. And whereas today more than three society and culture, we must also acknowledge the additional determination, hard work, and perseverance AAPI individuals must put forth to be heard and seen. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council and Mayor Kuhn hereby proclaim the month of May as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in Middleton, Wisconsin, and urge the citizens of the city of Middleton to join in recognizing the important role that AAPI individuals have played in our city, state, and nation. This proclamation was adopted at a regular meeting of the Middleton Common Council on the 16th day of May 2023. And Madam Mayor, it's my honor to move approval. Do I have a second? I second it. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor to approving the uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Alder Hanaira. Next on the agenda is the approval of consent agenda as recommended to council by committee commission board. Um, Madam Chair, I, I move approval with the exception of item one, which I would like to discuss briefly. Okay. Would you like? After. Okay, great. I'm going to read them out loud. Approval of May 2nd, 2023 Common Council meeting minutes. Audit of bills to be paid as approved by Finance Committee. Review of an application to amend the agent of the alcohol beverage license held by UW Provision Company at 2315 Pleasant View Road to appoint Aaron Manning, Spring Green, Wisconsin, as agent. Application for outdoor amplified sound permit by Jennifer Kratakwu for Kiva uh, Sports Center, a commercial enterprise at 8312 for Scythia for sound system, band, DJ, and speeches announcements from 4 to 1145 May through October 2023. Application for an outdoor amplified sound permit by Middleton Parks and Rec. Lara Gessling, contact person at the Walter Bauman Aquatic Center at 2400 Park Lawn Place for sound system and speeches announcements from 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. May 20th, 23 through September 1st, 23. Um, next is the amendment to agreement with Golf Creations for Prairie Hole Number 2 Renovations. Number seven is annual agreement with Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection for services to enforce required weights and measures regulations. And number eight is agreement with Wisconsin Housing Preservation Corps for Lakeview Village Solar and Battery Storage with EIGP 2021 grant funds. Do I hear a motion? Um, yes, I moved approval minus item number one. Great. Do I have a second? I'll second. Great. Uh, do you want to discuss? Now okay. we can vote on the package. great. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, going to the approval of the May 2nd, 2023 Common Council minutes. Yes, I move approval with one change to the minutes. Specifically, instead of referring to the seasonal downtown planter maintenance. The minutes should refer to the ornamental bed maintenance and that motion approving the agreement with Bruce Company was subject or pending city attorney review and approval. And that's the only change I had. Do I have a second? I'll second. This is Kendra. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of approving the May 2nd, 2023 Common Council minutes with the change, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Okay, moving on to organizational matters. The deliberation on and selection of candidate for district for alder person vacancy. Is there a motion? I will move that we open discussion on the candidates. Thanks. I'll second that. This is Hanaira. Okay. No, I think I did. Uh, just as a, a point of order, um, I want to let you know that as we discuss um, the candidates, we will need a majority, not a plurality, uh, when you go to voting. And so there may be more than one round because this is an infrequent thing. I believe that our last uh, 
vote was in 2017 uh, here in council. So uh, uh, Alder Nelson, do you wanna start the discussion? Um, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how to start. But... Um, does anybody have any comments about any of the questions that were asked or any anything that you thought we missed? I would say I don't think we missed anything. I thought um, all the candidates were very thoughtful in their answers, and I very much appreciate that they're all willing to step up into this role um, because it's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. It's also very, very rewarding. I will second that. I know I'm not supposed to second things, <laughs> but um, believing in democracy, I want to say a thank you for everyone who stepped up. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart. So I'm glad so many people were excited to come today. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage. Um, should we go through any of the questions and, and talk about anybody who stood out on any of them? Lisa? I, I'm wondering if, if it would be appropriate for someone to make a motion for- To vote on- To vote on a particular candidate. Yeah, I mean, if you're ready. Well, because we did receive the um, applications in advance, so it wasn't just the interviews. Right. The interviews sort of bolstered um, uh, what each of us may have already been thinking about. Um, I was impressed with the comments on climate change is no secret. Sustainability and climate change is important to me. If anybody didn't know, that was my question. <laughs> Um, kind of stood out. Um, I I believe I'm. I would be most. Um, I would be most comfortable with moving Jennifer Cole to be appointed to represent District Four on the Common Council. Schaefer will second. Any discussion? My only two cents on it was I I I think. My question was about what are the, the problems for the future? Um, and because I think we can all agree that sustainability is is a, a, a thought in everyone's mind. And I really appreciated um, Jennifer's comment about mitigation efforts within the sustainability umbrella for a better, lack of a better term. Um, I think we all know what we can do for as for planning perspective as far as setting up infrastructure and thinking about ways that we can build a sustainable energy infrastructure and water. Um, but when we talk about mitigating efforts um, and being prepared for what may come, I thought that was a really good point. Anybody else? I have um, just some quick comments on um, Jennifer. Um, I liked her positivity. I, I thought she had a good grasp of the issues that we face here. Um, I liked her ideas about consensus building and including diversity um, and that she's a public policy nerd. So um, any other discussion? Um, so then moving forward, let's, let's vote on whether, uh, Jennifer Cole would be a good alder for district Four. Lisa. I'm just, I think I, Emily's I'll, got I'll a call. I'll take back over. Uh, <laughs> I think, I'm sorry, because it's uh, committee of the whole. So, okay. um, so the, uh, Motion. The motion is to um, to appoint Jennifer Cole to represent uh, District Four. Thank you. Um, and for all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Um, the motion passes six to one. All right.
moving on to agreements. Uh, agreement with Ramaker for design engineering services for EV charging infrastructure planning and construction services for installation of EV chargers. This is an IRO. I move approval as recommended by the finance committee. Do I have a second? This is Kendra. I'll second on behalf of Public Works. Right. Any discussion? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of uh, the EV charging infrastructure planning and construction services, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Miscellaneous. The next agenda item is recommendation of assessments for Parmenter Street reconstruction. I'll move approval. This is an IRO um, as recommended by the Finance Committee. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor for recommendation of assessments for Parmenter Street reconstruction, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Moving on to the five-year street improvement plan. Do I hear a motion? This is an IRO. I'll move approval of the five-year street improvement plan as recommended by the Public Works Committee. The street design consistent with resolution 2022-48, the complete streets policy. Is there a second? Schaefer will second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of the five-year street improvement plan, please say aye. Mayor, can I? Uh, oh, discussion. Oh, I'm Could I ask a question? Yes, I apologize. Um, I love discussion of your plans. <laughs> Question and looking at the the plan, and I don't know if someone else will answer this, but how do how do streets get put on the five year plan or the sixth year of the of the plan? Good question. If, the, if there are are streets that might be in my district that need work, sure. Um, how do how do we go about? You know that's my favorite topic, Sean. Right? Yeah, and yeah. and we have a whole bullet list of criteria that get uh, considered and evaluated. So there's a whole points matrix for various components of what we look at in reviewing streets. Okay. I'd have to send it to you in an email to to reasonably explain it. Uh, I don't have them all memorized, but part of it is. Um, whether it's an arterial collector or local street. So how much traffic is on it, essentially. Uh, pavement condition is an important part. The overall uh, annual budget limitation, um, whether there are streets uh, that have some adjacency to them so we can kind of form a project in a neighborhood, um, whether something has previously been budgeted but not yet constructed. So it got deferred for whatever reason. We try to keep that as a relatively high priority. So it's it's a lot of things that kind of go together. It's not just uh, street pavement condition. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's a plan and plans can change. If, if needs change or the council has different ideas, regardless of the fact that they've been placed on the plan in a previous year. And and to expand on that, excellent point, Larry. Uh, you know, so staff puts that together, and that's when the committee process starts with, okay. you know, should it be changed? Okay. Like if I wanted to add a street, what would be my first go to go to staff? Uh yeah, I would suggest starting with us, uh, because we annually update it, okay. usually in spring so that we can use it in preparation of the capital budget, which we're usually working on uh, in late June or July. And also we have to turn it into the county, uh, well, really through the MPO in June. Uh, so every year we update it and then re-coordinate with other agencies. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Thank you so much, Sean. And thanks for the great question and everyone helping me. All right, so uh, any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the five-year street improvement plan, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Request uh, from the Conservancy Condominium Association to not install a proposed sidewalk 
adjacent to Middleton Conservancy Condominium Association property. I'd like to, motion? yeah, I'd like to make a motion um, at this time to um, not move ahead with the sidewalk project um, and open for discussion and alternatives. Okay, do I have a second? If that um, multiple motions, but one motion. That's right. I, can I, is it a counter motion? Sorry. Okay, I would like to counter motion to proceed with the, with the substitute motion. substitute motion. Thank you, Larry. I would like to propose a substitute motion that we proceed with the sidewalk. I'll second that. This is an IRO. Uh, any discussion? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alder Lorman first. Yeah, I, I I'd really like to summarize. Um, you know, the citizen input um, from. Uh, M MCCA and Solitude and the residents along Oak Creek really is well balanced. So um, I think it's important for the city of Middleton to have sidewalks and this and important for the city of Middleton to develop plans and means for public uh, access and, and, and foot traffic. But I think we need to do it in a way that is thought out and future thinking. So what, what I'm really saying is not knowing never to anything along Pheasant Branch Road. But the way it's proposed at the moment, I think is short-sighted. There may be more taking place out at Pheasant Branch Road in the future. There might be some additional development. There's gonna be red tail. The road at some point is gonna to have to be redone. I, I think the, uh, the points that are obviously pointed out about uh, uh, water, water runoff and, and so on and so forth require a little bit of uh, thought. And so maybe we can have something there that, that is usable for the residents. Um, if we put a sidewalk in that goes to nowhere in the winter time, it literally ends at a stairwell. And it's a stairwell that is, is not even accessible from an ADA um, standpoint. So, you know, it's, it's a sidewalk that's really only gonna be used seasonally. So I, I think, it's um, a lot of times it's difficult to have an ask to say, I want it both ways, right? We want something that is usable, but we want something that is in the spirit of, of what um, MCCA and uh, Solitude even mentioned, because even Solitude is, is, you know, says, yes, we're in favor of a sidewalk, we're in favor of something there, but we really do understand the fact that the uh, residents of uh, MCCA get no benefit from this. Um, so there's, there's a financial discussion, but I, I see a much larger discussion that is looking you know, towards the future. If we're gonna do something, let's do it right. That um, you know, is, is in everybody's interest. So I would ask the common council to maybe be open to having more discussion with the city engineering, seeing what our options are, seeing what can be done. Thanks. Thank you, Alder Lorman. Uh, Alder Hanairo, do you have a quick clarifying? Because, okay. If, if Alder Schaefer, Schaefer had his hand raised first, that's yes. fine. Alder Schaefer? Yeah, well, I appreciate what Alderman Lorman says. I think that there are a couple issues that I have concerns about. One is the idea that, that the owners association really has no use for the sidewalk. I think the entire city could make that discussion about their sidewalk. Every single house, most of us get in our driveway, drive down in the car. It's rare that any of us walk on our sidewalks. The sidewalks are not there for our personal house privilege, but essentially for the city. And there is a sidewalk that comes all the way to that intersection and there is a park. And yes, it's only used in the summer, but it's still, we heard testimony from people who are there. So I think I, I personally don't buy into the notion that because they don't get the value directly, that therefore we shouldn't put it in because that's a same with the cost issue. This is not really the cost, but every homeowner could tell that I don't get much benefit for the sidewalk I have, but I paid for it anyways. And so uh, I, those two arguments on their part, I find specious. Now, the, whether the design is correct and everything, I, I can agree completely. I don't know what, where that should go, but in terms of the need to put it in, and the cost factors, those are things that I think we, we need to separate from this discussion. And I agree, I, I, I really do. I think it's-, it's Alder Lorman, <laughs> please, please yeah. hold on. Larry, do you need to interject? Hey, I do. Um, there's been discussion of benefit. 
and Alder Schaefer has made a point that I would, would have made, but I'll make it from a legal perspective. Um, it is true that nearly all special assessments require a showing of benefit to the property owner. But under section 66.0907 in the case law construing it, sidewalks are the one conspicuous exception because the courts have found consistent with all of Schaefer's statement that everybody benefits from having sidewalks. But the one sidewalk they don't benefit from is the one in front of their own home. And that is the law. So benefit is not an issue um, for sidewalk special assessments. Thank you for that, Alder Nelson and then Hanairo. <clears throat> Thanks. I think I had the same comments about the benefit. I, however, Larry, use my sidewalk every day <laughs> because I have a dog that I have to walk. <laughs> but um, I would, I'm, I, I have a quick question for Alder Lorman. Um, you're saying it's, it's not going to be used in the winter. Is it not going to be shoveled? Um, it doesn't go anywhere in the winter. So you can walk down the sidewalk that parallels uh, Pheasant Branch to a stairwell that ends at the condo complex. And that stairwell is um, not an improved type of access point. It's, it's so not- Isn't there like, not a path? Is it, is it, is it yeah. And, um, it's it's so like a timber, is, timber and um, timber. It's, it's just like timbers that are filled in with some black top and it just kind of- I'm assuming it's going to be required to be shoveled. I don't know. That's their property. Uh, all right. So, Elder yeah. and Nairo. So, let's I'm sorry. Thank you. I have, no, no, I'll come right back, back. Can she clarify? Yeah. Do you know this, if this path is used in winter? I, I know this area because I, this, this road and where the sidewalk is going to be, this is between District 6 and District 7. And I live on the uh, west side of the Conservancy. So I'm on this road all the time. And I can attest to how hazardous it is. You know, we all have a place in our district where we see people walking and we think, ooh, that looks so unsafe. This is that place in my district. Mm -hmm. um, and to make matters worse, when people are heading north, which is the side that the path is on, they have their backs to the traffic. So it's it, there is a need for uh, public safety reasons to put this in. The I, I, Objecting to the term stairwell, because I think of that as like a stairwell in a building, it is uh, the sidewalk will go to a path that goes down into the conservancy condos, but then connects with the Pheasant Branch um, conservancy path. And so I see this as a boon not just for the residents in the area who will be able to walk safely to the conservancy, as we heard many do, um, but also for people who are walking in the conservancy and now have a safe way to get up to those shops and restaurants uh, in Middleton Hills. And I, I completely agree that uh, we heard testimony or comments from the public that people who live in the condos do go up to those businesses. So this sidewalk will benefit them. And, and I'll just add that to second what Alder Schaefer said, um, every time they do walk up to those businesses in Middleton Hills, they're walking on a sidewalk that somebody else paid for. And I think it's fair uh, and appropriate to ask them to make a small contribution to improving public safety. Right. Thank you. Alder Nelson. Yeah, I, I just wanted to finish my thought. I walk on that path a lot. And in the early spring, oftentimes the, the trail is still really icy. And I have to go up onto Pheasant Branch Road to get past a certain point and then go back on it. And I think this sidewalk would be very useful at that point. So um, I don't see it as being used just in the summertime. So we're in agreement. Is that around March, April when it's icy? I know that's usually when it gets yeah. icy around ours. Okay. Yeah. I'm just 
trying February, to March. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Madam Chair, uh, may, may I make Germain. one more one Very more hard. comment? It's, it's, no, it's okay. I just wanted to address um, the concerns raised um, by Mr. Mason and the MCCA, specifically the stormwater one. Um, I believe all the alders received today uh, Sean Stowski's message talking about how sidewalk construction would continue the existing drainage pattern with surface runoff across the sidewalk and downslope to the east without trying to concentrate runoff flows by directing water runoff north or south along a sidewalk edge. Um, so I trust our public works folks to be on top of this and make sure that they're not exacerbating a situation. Thank you, that's a very good point. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those voting to deny the request to not Madam Mayor, sorry, sorry just yes, a point of information. Just to, that? Yep, just to give some clarification. Uh, the original motion from Alder Lorman um, did not have a second. So the motion, the subsequent motion that was made by Alder Wokas and seconded by Alder Hanairo, that is the motion on the floor. That motion is for approval of the sidewalk project. Okay, approval of sidewalk project. All right. And I'll to be clear, despite what the agenda says, it's the Middleton Conservancy Condominium Associates, yes. Associated, not Madison. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice. Uh, so, all of those in favor of approval of the sidewalk, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Uh, the motion passes 6 1. Thank you for the spirited discussions. I quite enjoy sidewalk talks, it turns out. All right. <laughs> Next a topic is allocation of 16,300 in American Rescue Plan Act funds for the purchase of Badger Book electronic poll books. Is there a motion? I'll move approval as recommended by the Finance Committee. This is Wilkes, I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the allocation to purchase Badger Book electronic poll books, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Next on the agenda is the concept design approval for Lakeview East Park and Lake Street Boat Launch Redevelopment Planning. Is there a motion? Schaefer will make a motion on behalf of Parks. And your motion is? To approve this plan. Okay. Is submitted. Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, discussion, go ahead. Oh, do I need it? Do I need a vote? No. No. Okay. I'm having a moment. No, that's okay. My apologies. Uh, just some comment. I mean, I, I also need some clarification. I was last month still with parks of still am i guess but i had to miss yesterday's meeting but it was when we went through this with a lot of public input for many hours at parks and and i'm not sure that there was there was only one plan that even began to mention the concept of a beach and i don't see any mention of a beach anywhere on here so at least some of the comment was coming to us still reflecting older information hmm. i think there was a the other thing that that i want to point out at least to the committee that the number of people who spoke and primarily on behalf of keeping the boat ramp wanted everything to be status quo, but the road is being rebuilt. And because of the road being rebuilt, we are required to make all kinds of significant changes, all of which will disrupt and pretty much destroy the status quo of the, of the, the boat ramp. So the, we, we quickly sort of had to get to this idea that keeping the boat ramp as it is, is just simply not part of the criteria that we could deal with. And many of the plans that we looked at that, that kept the boat ramp in place had all kinds of problems with traffic flow and fire departments and blocking streets. And so there were a number of issues. And I think that there was also a very strong consensus in that group, probably more than tonight, that, that a lot of people want access to non-motorized boats and that, yes, it's here, but we're the only one on the lake that's free. We're the only one that's open 24 hours a day. We don't have the parking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that there's our 10 other places to get onto the lake. So I think that just my reflection of what the committee was and mine personally is that, is that looking at this is that, that the need to maintain a motorized boat ramp is not a top priority for this. And no, there's not a beach there. I think people are thinking the pea gravel landing is a beach now that I'm yeah, looking I think at that's it, it yeah. must be what they're looking at. 
Madam Mayor, just a point of information, if, if the council so desires, we do have Blake Thiessen from Parkitecture uh, on Zoom in case you have any questions about the concepts, we feel free to call on him. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, okay. Uh, Alder Hanaira. Okay, thank you. Um, I agree with um, Alder Schaefer about my confusion over the beach. I guess it wasn't my confusion <laughs> because, um, yeah, there there was no proposal in the, the latest round that we saw. Um, and I, I would agree that it's not a good place to put a beach or have swimming. Um, I, I've read the public input, I listened to the public input, and I share the viewpoint that the current proposed design is trying to accommodate too many needs in too small a space and not really serving any of them well. Um, I worry about safety. Uh, I worry about water quality. I'm concerned about the queuing of vehicles waiting to launch because I feel like no, no idling should be enforced. Mm -hmm. And if there weren't a boat launch just three quarters of a mile away in Marshall Park, this would be a much more difficult decision. Um, but I really don't see it as a burden to ask owners of motorized boats to drive a bit further um, and use the launch at Marshall Park. It, it's as noted by many in the comments, there's parking available there. They have restroom facilities, so we won't have the problems that were reported with uh, public urination. Um, I believe there's a boat washing station there. Um, and Middleton doesn't really have any place where people can just sit and view the lake. Someone in the uh, commenters mentioned that people will just drive down there and look at the lake. I've done that. It's not the most pleasant uh, place to be observing the lake. And I think we could really, you know, I, I came from Sheboygan in 2017 and the lakefront in Sheboygan, if you have never been there, it is totally accessible. And I feel like this is our little corner where we can open it up to so many more people than the folks who just use it now. And those users, if it's, uh, if non-motorized, um, um, if non-motorized crafts are the focus and we don't have motorboats being launched there uh, with their trailers, I think opening it up to more quiet uses will be compatible with the neighborhood that is growing. You know, there will be more people living there. Um, I, I really like the idea of having a place where any of us can just go and have a, a, a picnic or just sit and reflect. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, instead of approving this concept, if we should refer this to the plan commission at least, um, possibly sustainability and public works as was recommended uh, and public safety as well. And because I, I, I would agree that we don't, we haven't had enough time. Maybe PRFC has had time to think about this deeply, but I feel like there's so much more than just a boat access or a park yeah. um, in this decision. So I, I would be inclined um, to refer this to the four committees. Well, I'm, I'm happy to amend the motion to reflect those referrals at this point, because it did come to parks kind of out of the blue. It really is not a park. And, and we did spend a lot of time with it, but I think it would all be helpful. So if I can amend that motion to to recommend it to those committees that you, you mentioned to. Yeah. And uh, who, who? I'll second the amendment. You second, you're, you're mm -hmm. approved the, the change. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and sorry, we, Madam yes, Mayor, just a point of information. Um, I think that's fine to refer this to those committees for um, review. The one point I will make is this may mean an adjustment in the contract. Uh, for time, because if we're asking four more committees to take a look at it, uh, I don't know how much time is left on the architecture contract for review that. So that'll be an item we'll have to deal with on the staff level uh, once this goes back to committees. Okay. I, I think in, in that regard, it's down to one decision as opposed to four. So I don't, I think it wouldn't affect it that much. All right. So Alder Jackson had a comment and then Alder Nelson. Um, my comment is, 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 and I'm glad that I, hear from my fellow council that we're looking to amend this because my concerns is even if we go forward with it that there be some oversight and some follow through with the concerns that the constituents had tonight on the gas and the oil leaks for environmental concerns and the concerns for the safety of the children that are out there so that's just my biggest concern even if we move forward just have some follow-up and some oversight now if we're going to amend it and send it to the committees then i'm in favor of that yeah. You know, um, I, I just think that um, I think we need some more information on this. I don't think we should just move forward with this without addressing those concerns that were brought before us tonight. 
And that, that's why I'm happy to, to amend the motion because I agree. Thank you, Alder Nelson. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm new to the Parks Committee and I, I walked into this year old discussion and it just felt wrong. It felt not ready to be at Parks. It felt not park-like. So um, it, it wasn't baked enough to come to Parks, I don't think. And I feel badly that that was on their shoulders for the last year because um, I do think some planning, some help from the Planning Commission will, and Public Works will be very helpful. I want to note that it was stated last night in, in Exhibit F, the median with the trees has to come out because of utilities, um, which is unfortunate because I think it's really attractive. Um, and then I also just wanted to say that um, we're trying really hard to be um, environmentally conscious and two stroke engines are some of the worst offenders along with lawnmowers, the boats are mm -hmm. pretty bad. Um, and so while I respect fishermen and what they do, I like Alder Hanairo said, there's another launch just a little bit down the road this might be a really good uh, statement in our mission. Um, and I'm, I don't know about winter ice boats. Um, and I don't, I don't know if the one um, public comment said that it's impossible to launch them from Marshall Park. It, um, it tends to be open water for a long time and Sorry, I'm resident knowledgeable. Lake so it ice freezes ice. first at here, but the, at this pier. Kylie and I talked about this because it was a concern. And what uh, she can come and talk, but the um, that pathway, like say that's motorized or not motorized, it would be wide enough because the fire trucks and paramedics have to get through. And so an ice boat could still get there. Yeah. Or if they I use like four wheelers. Win -win. Yeah. And so that will be a wide enough path to absorb their traffic in case there's anything else. Yeah, and, and also the um, ATVs, I think that's what they were really trying to hit on is the ATV access for ice fishing um, would be available at that location. Yeah, so it's, uh, if you ever have any ice fishing, fishing questions, I'm here for you, besides mayor duties, who knew? All right, um, any with that, uh, yes. Just a question, because does this include the East Lakeview Park concept as well as the boat launch? Are these combined? Are we, does it all go to the other Good committees? Question. So the, um, the major um, concern tonight is to approve the um, concept for the boat, the boat launch. Um, the PRFC did recommend the um, design concept for the park to um, Common Council for approval. Um, so that was additionally on the, the agenda with that concept plan. So, but there would not be violence to the concept plan by uh, separating these two objects and moving one and sending the other one to committee? No, no. No, because they're already separated by a woods and a swamp. <laughs> or um, but it's one agenda item, that's all I'm saying. Or do we want to, or is it better to keep them to, what are, how are they funded? Are they funded completely separately as well? They, yeah, okay. they would be, it's a different timeline, oh, um, okay. a that, completely yeah. different timeline. So funding would be. Yeah, and my motion was specifically with regard to the boat launch and not to the park. So if that needs to be amended to reflect that as well, I think. That I would suggest you need a motion for separate consideration of the um, Lakeview East Park, vote that one up or down, and then you can come back to the boat launch and do with it as you see fit. All right, well, I will make that motion. I, do I, I have a second? I oh. would counter that only because with the flood of emails about the boat launch specifically, I'll be honest, I don't feel like I put enough time into thinking about the park design. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I really don't. So if it's possible to make a decision on that separately at the next council meeting, I would appreciate the chance. Well, to... that, that's what we're doing. I think we're separating that. 
park out. Oh, okay. And so it's just and we, make it so there's no defer, longer part of but, this, and deferring defer it. That one. Okay. So a substitute motion would be to separate the agenda items um, from Lakeview East Park and Lake Street Boat Launch, and to defer Lake East Park discussion and decision okay. until next council meeting. Yeah. Thank you. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry, just for point of information and clarification. So maybe the, the best path forward would be uh, to have Alder Shaver and Alder Nelson withdraw your original motion then we do three separate motions that would follow. So the first motion after that would be uh, to have council consider the items separately, the Eastview Park design and the Eastview Boat Launch uh, redesign development concept as separate items. Then the second uh, motion would be to defer uh, the park design to the next city council meeting on June 6th. And then the third and final motion would be for uh, referring of the Lake Street Boat Launch concept to the Planning Commission Sustainability, Public Safety and Public Works Committees for further consideration. So just right. to be clear. So I'll, I withdraw my motion if my seconder will agree. Yeah. All right. So then I make a motion to separate these two items into separate agenda items. For separate consideration. Separate consideration. I will second. All right. All those in favor of separating out the two items, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. And our next. I will also make a motion to defer discussion of the park until the next meeting. Okay. A second. Uh, which park are you? I'm sorry. Which park? The the, the, the East, Lakeview East, Lakeview. East. The Lakeview East. Okay. Lakeview East. East. Lack of a better name. Excellent. Uh, all those in. Oh, any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of deferring the Lakeview East Park redesign, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Right. I will then make a third motion, which was my amended original motion, which is to refer to the committee's mention for the boat ramp. Okay, and that includes Plan Commission Plan Sustainability Commission. and Public Works? That's correct. And I and believe public, public safety. safety. And public safety, okay. Public safety, yeah. Jackson seconds it. All right. All those, or any discussion? All those in favor of approving the referral of uh, the boat launch to the Plan Commission, Sustainability, Public Works, and Public Safety, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Do we have any more motions on that one? We're clear. Moving on. <laughs> All right. It's a thick agenda, everyone. You're doing great. All right. Ordinances, the first reading. The ordinance to rezone from R3A high density residential to plan development district general implementation plan Middleton Shores redevelopment 6110 6150 Century Avenue. Is there a motion? This is Hanairo. I'll move approval as recommended by the plan commission. This is Jackson. I'll second it. Any discussion? I'm just going to go on the record that I don't support buildings above five stories without conditional use permits in very specific areas within the city, which I don't think this meets. And may I comment on that? I'm Alder Hanaira. To comment, I'm actually going to read what one of my colleagues on the plan commission said. And that was, she urged everyone, open up your minds. And she said, I see this as the perfect spot for a plan development district to be outside of the norms of our zoning. This is the perfect spot to consider an alternative. They're trying to reduce, they being the uh, owner and developer, they're trying to reduce surface parking in order to enhance the health of the conservancy by reducing runoff. That's a goal that everybody in the community benefits from, not just the immediate neighbors, not just this piece of land. If you look at what's surrounding this, why would we need to have a five-story cap on this? Driving north on Allen, you'll see this building, but right now you see a two-story, you see two-story buildings that don't have much appeal. To the west is CVS. It's not in the way of anyone's view to the lake or the conservancy. It's not in anyone's way. Even the shadow is not bothering any other property. If we want to enhance density and bring it away from the conservancy and put people near one of the few places that has services and a bus line, this is the place. One of the few places you could be pedestrian friendly. And I would add this is consistent with our plans. 
um, the owners are dedicated to sustainability. I'm kind of hoping still for the mass timber construction, which would be the first in uh, Dane County. And I sure wish this were in TID 3 because then we could make that happen. Fen Friends of Pheasant Branch Conservancy had no concerns and only made suggestions for uh, native landscaping, which I hope the owners will do. The density of this building when constructed, constructed will compare favorably to other developments in this area. Um, and traffic is a concern, but we need to fix Allen and Century for many reasons, not just because of this development. So I'm going to vote in favor and I hope my colleagues will do so as well. Okay, all those in favor of rezoning um, the high- as a, as a first reading. As a first reading, thank you. Uh, high density residential to plan development district GIP Middleton Shores redevelopment on 6110, 6150 Century Avenue. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. The motion passes six to one. Next on the agenda are the resolutions. Resolution 2023-27, support for Dane County Collaborative Charging and Fuel Infrastructure, Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Planning Grant. Madam Chair, I move that we consider all five of these resolutions and block because they all came from the Finance Committee and were all approved by finance. Well, and my my motion is made with um, consultation with the city administrator. Yeah, the, the only reason I'm grimacing is because to make things accurate, and it wasn't an issue for the plan commission, resolutions three, four, and five should actually be ratification of the submission of the applications and, and approval. The first two could certainly be approved together. But, but technically speaking, since because of time constraints, um, I'm not sure if it was all three or two out of three, uh, but there was there, uh, there were at least there were at least two, I believe, which were submitted before council approval because of the press of time. Okay. So I just want to make sure we have an accurate record of. All right, then I'm. I'll, I appreciate that, Larry. I will amend my motion and say I move that we consider the first two and block for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I'm gonna read the second one just for the audience. Uh, and I appreciate efficiency, so thank you. Resolution 2023-28, amending the 2023 capital projects budget for the Middleton Springs Drive Reconstruction Project. And with that, is there any discussion? Sorry, we need a second on that motion. We need a second on the motion. Uh, Dave, 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 Dave Lorman. Dave. Dave. Mm -hmm. Dave. Alder Lerman. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of uh, blocking one and two, uh, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, can we do three, four, and five separately or together as well? Yes, together is fine. My next motion will be to consider ratifying um, resolutions 2023-30, 31, and 32, and block. Right. Uh, on behalf of years of work with parks, I will second that motion. Uh, Larry, do I need to read them out loud for the people out there? At least the numbers. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, any discussion on resolution 202330, 2233, 31, and 2232? Hearing none, all those in favor uh, of 202330, 202331, and 202332, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. And again, thank you for the efficiencies on that. Uh, next up is the committee appointments. Appointments of personnel sub or personnel committee chair. Is there a motion? Hearing none, can we have some staff background? I do know that we need to have one and there's only three members on there. Yeah, just which... it was an item that uh, hadn't been taken care of in the last uh, council meeting when we did the council. Uh, committee appointments. I just wanted to put that on the agenda as an item for the body to take care of. Um, we, we don't have a personnel committee scheduled, uh, at least as of now, uh, for the next meeting on June 6th, but just want to make sure we've got a chair identified for whenever that happens. Um, if, if we don't appoint somebody, 
then the highest or next ranking person would be the acting chair until such time as we make that appointment. Right. I, if I may, I believe we didn't do that because we didn't have full three committee members until, but now that we don't have the new the district four sworn in yet, can we still, how does that work? Can we wait until the next personnel yeah. committee yep, meeting? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why it was still outlying. Yep. Yeah. Which we should, I should have probably said many an hour ago is congratulations to that new district four. Um, in saying that, is there, does anyone else have any other comments or thoughts? Who are the three on the, the personnel? I apologize. Alder, Alder Jackson, Alder Nelson. I'm on. Mm -hmm. okay. And then Alder elect, Alder appoint. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Excellent. Uh, do you have any thoughts? No, if you don't mind doing it the next personnel meeting, that'd be perfect. Yeah, we usually, so, I mean, I think personnel is a little different, but I, I think you guys should just vote together. Yeah. I, if I may, too, as a standing committee, I think it's your appointment, mm -hmm. Mayor. It is mine, but um, I think that all three have so many gifts and talents. I was open to um, some insights and perhaps that's why Brian put it forward. Just for discussion. I appreciate that. All right, next on is citizen appointments to committees, commissions and boards. It's usually cool. If you're looking for um, a motion so we can begin discussion, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Madam, sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Nelson. My apologies. No worries. Commissioner Nelson. <laughs> Commissioner Alder Nelson. Alder Nelson. Go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to remind everyone on the council before we vote on these, um, some excerpts from the official handbook for committees, um, things that make a committee member essential. A good relationship with the common council is important. Um, establishing a good working relationship with the fellow appointed members, the common council, and the staff liaison for each committee is important. As an ambassador of the city of Middleton, the common council hopes that committee members will conduct themselves with politeness and courtesy with the city staff and whenever in the public eye. When appointed members interact positively, the group as a whole will be more effective. Um, I believe these are things that we should keep in mind as we vote for the committee appointments. Thanks. Thanks, Alder and Iro. Um, I just had a couple of comments. One, I, I will say as a former member of the airport commission, I'm disappointed that there are no women being appointed because now it will be an all male commission and um, that's concerning to me. Um, I also note that two and maybe all three of the new airport commissioners have hangers at the airport. So it will be very important for our city administrator and our um, uh, two alder representatives on the commission to make sure that any commissioners who stand to benefit from uh, decisions related to user fees do not propose fee related actions, uh, discuss them or vote on them consistent with our code of ethics. Um, second, I, I am concerned about the appointment of one person to two committees, and that is uh, Susan West, former alder from District 6. Um, she's recommended for appointment to the uh, Water Resources Management Commission and Public Safety. Um, I don't think it's customary for citizens to be appointed to more than one body. Alders, yes, of course, um, but citizens, no. And the exception is when uh, under our ordinance, there is a liaison relationship. So um, PRFC is a member of the plan commission. It, then it makes sense. Um, but I see these 
committee appointments as our way to engage residents in city government. There are pipeline for building future city leaders. Most or maybe all of us who are um, elected and serving right now, we were previously appointed to serve on city committees, commissions, and boards. Um, so I think it's okay to have one seat taken by somebody who previously held a leadership position. And for that reason, I can support appointing Susan West to the Water Resources Management Commission. I think it's a good fit for her given her prior experience. And honestly, it is not a, it's not an easy position to fill. So I, I think she would fit in well there. Um, public safety though, is really a great point of entry for other uh, Middleton residents because it, it isn't very technical um, like WRMC is and it has broad appeal. Um, so I feel strongly that we should reserve that seat for someone new to help us build a deeper bench of future leaders. And uh, for that reason, I'd like to make a motion to amend your list, Madam Mayor, um, and delete uh, Susan West as the appointee to public safety. I'll second. Right. Any other discussion? Um, I, I, I oh, sorry. sorry, please, Alder Garman. Um, experience in being through this process before in the past, um, you know, discussions regarding uh, appointments like this that tend to get heated at times. One of the things I learned from the past is that you know the the committees and commissions' job is to be a technical review entity and to simply have knowledge and expertise or experience, bring something to that committee or commission where they've had uh, experiences in, in the past and leave the politics up to the common council. So I, I, I think, and, and also um, just res with respect to the airport commission, um, uh, previous commission members have all uh, been hangar um, leases at the airport, uh, including the former chair. And of the uh, current candidates, only uh, two to my knowledge, uh, not to my knowledge, two um, do have aircraft and one does not. So um, it's either we apply the rules to everybody who goes on every single commission um, for diversity, equity, inclusion, and shall we say uh, potential conflicts of ownership or interest in properties and are we and then we start putting restrictions on f former alders and how many things they can participate in the city i think it would uh, not be wouldn't be beneficial to us to you know not leverage their knowledge and experience and their willingness also to simply you know participate any other comments Alder Crow. Um, I noticed there's nobody that's been appointed yet for library board. And is that because we're still lacking? That candidates? is accurate. We have 10 current openings. Um, we have not seen a plethora of applications across various committees. Um, uh, we are planning to do an announcement as a city tomorrow to the listserv to make sure we're getting more. And we're going to change uh, down the road. Uh, Brian may not know, but we're going to ask maybe quarterly or every six months for refreshed applications, not from current members, but future as people move to the city, make sure they know there's things so that next year uh, we will have lots of applications to look at. And hopefully we will have a female uh, applying for airport and then I can consider her. Uh, so that was, yeah, Alder Hanaira. Um, just a question for you, Madam Chair, and I also want to respond to my colleague from District 7. Um, could you make available to us a list of all the seats you need to fill? Because I do have a neighborhood meeting coming up on Thursday, and I'd be happy to um, try to recruit some folks. Um, I agree with Alder uh, Warman that the code of ethics should apply equally to all. Uh, uh, the reason I'm bringing this up in the context of the airport commission is because in the past, um, commissioners have set their own rates for the leases, and that is of concern to me. <coughs> okay, uh, Nelson, and then uh, Focus. I am sorry for that. My comments. Focus. We'll come back. Um, I would just <laughs> like to 
west, I guess, at this point. I don't know in the in the series of the motion how this might work, but um, currently the mayor is a as a standing works committee, the public works committee is a standing committee. And I believe it is in your purview to donate or designate it's after nine o'clock. My boards are failing <laughs> um, to designate a chair, but I would kindly request that you let the committee decide who would be their chairperson. I will take that into consideration. We can hold off on that chair uh, for tonight. If that would make you happy. Uh, my comment was, Nelson. I hope that Todd Kalish is encouraged to join a committee as he was a candidate for your seat and he's willing to be involved and hopefully we can recruit him for possibly the library board. One of the many. One of the many committees. I think that's a brilliant uh, idea. Uh, and uh, just so the committee knows, or the council knows, uh, Tom Yost is on, I, I put you on bike petty uh, if, if you were to not be selected, because it was something that we talked about many times on public safety, that he cares so much about pedestrian safety and, and bike safety. So I hope that uh, you will accept that. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other discussion from the council? Madam Chair, just a point of information, just so the body is clear on what's on the table. Uh, so we had an original motion uh, to approve the citizen committee appointments. There was a subsequent motion um, to delete Susan West as the appointee for public safety. So in terms of how you'd vote, you vote on that last item first, and then we go back up to the amended list of uh, appointments. And may I ask, Brian, do we also, after um, after voting on my amendment, do we have to make a formal amendment to defer on Charles and the chair of the public works? Okay. All right. So all those in favor of, because our, do we have the motion? Starting with, yes, it was my motion to um, keep Susan West on Water Resources Management Commission, but remove her from public safety and, and find another appointee. So all those in favor of just Susan, is that? Just that one change is what I'm suggesting. All those in favor of keeping Susan West on water resources and removing her from public safety, please say aye. 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 Um, any opposed? Opposed. Uh, the motion passes six to one. Now there was a second. Yep, no. To amend. Um, the appointment of Charles Myers to the Public Works um, Committee as a chair, and just to make it as an as a appointment to the committee. All right. Uh, any discussion? Well, I, I guess I'll second that. Don't we need a oh, second? Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Any any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. All right, and then is there any other changes or additions, concerns? All right, do I hear a motion for the rest of the list? I think I already had a motion. Yep. So okay, we can go, you. so now we can go to that one. I, I had moved approval and uh, Alder Lorman seconded. Great, thank you for the reminder. Sure. So all those in favor for the remaining of the list, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to adjournment. Is there a motion? I will move for adjournment. Jackson, a second it. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, everyone.